Well, folks, I might as well say it. This is not one of my better days. I'm looking out the window. It's been pouring the rain, dark and gloomy. Just talked to Jan. She's over on the hillside on her little farm where they get the brunt of any storms. She can always call and tell me what's coming because they get it first. Now, I'm wearing my new robe. Now, I bought a pink one at Dillard's several months ago and got on sale for $36. I walked in Goodwill yesterday. I said, oh, I think I'll just look at some of their old vintage lingerie. And out pops four robes, a dollar ninety-nine each, and I looked at them and I said, these have never been worn. The right size, and I bought them. This is one of them. It looks just like my Miss Elaine uh, robe. So anyway, that's as fixed as I'm going to be today. It's one of those uh, gloom and agony on me. Yes, it's my turn to complain. I have had pain up my face into my eye. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like to be struck by lightning? Well, that's what it feels like. When that pain shoots up my face, I think I have had a bolt of lightning goes from here into my eye and my eye, it causes my eye to burn. Feels like a hot poker. Okay, I know you're saying, ooh, ah, oh, cause. And some of you probably know what it is. At first, I thought it was my teeth. I'd had a, a, two, a small filling done, and it started after that. I thought, something wrong with my tooth. Well, I've been to the dentist about three times. Since then, they've done x-rays. They've done everything. It's not my teeth. It's in my face. And one lady says, you've got neuropathy. Well, I know a little bit about that because one of my sisters had TMJ for about 18 years. And I'm telling you, the woman lived in pain all those years. She lived on Valium and you could look at her and see her pain. I don't know how she lived through it. I just don't. And that's the first thing I thought of when this pain came in my face. So don't worry. You don't have to give me all your remedies and prognosis or anything because I've got an appointment with my doctor in three weeks. You know they can't take you the same day. But the last time I went, I said, this is not going to wait. It has to be done today. And they took me in. But in this case, I... I'll bear with it. And don't feel sorry for me. Everybody's got something wrong with them. And I'll manage through it. I've got YouTube. I've got you people. I've got Goodwill and thrift shops. And I've got craft work. I've got all sorts of things I can do. And I keep watching my friend Marlene She's getting ready to move into her new house. And oh gosh, I am so envious of her. She's going to have rooms and space to work with. I'm in this little cubbyhole apartment trying to say, how can I push the walls back so I have more room for my stuff? You know, it's stuff to other people. But to me, it's my treasures. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to move back a little bit. I'm trying to get the glare off my glasses. 
If I take my glasses off, you can see my red eyes. I'd rather you looked at my red glasses. Okay. Let's get off of that subject. Gloom. What is it? I had it a min minute ago. The hee-haw uh, expression. The gloom and agony on me. Yeah, deep, dark depression. Excessive misery. Well, you can turn me off now. Nobody wants to hear that anymore. And you don't you don't have to even comment. I just want you to know that this is one of my days. One of the things I wanted to talk about is um, I was visiting Jan yesterday at the antique shop. Hold on, I've got something I want to pick up and show you. Okay, now, I hope you had time to get your cup of coffee while I went to get my little box of goodies. This is something Jan gave me yesterday, something she gathered up, and we've been doing this for the last few years. Ooh. I want to show you what one of my upcoming projects will be and has been for the last two or three years. But it takes certain materials, which when I run out, I can't, I can't do these projects without materials. And what I'm talking about is, well, let's see what we got here. Junk jewelry. Junk jewelry. There's a little bit. That's not a good example. Let me find another one. And then I'll show you why I want all this stuff. Here's a little bag of pearls. A lot of this is broken necklaces. All kinds of beads. See these beads? This is a necklace. Oh, here's one really pretty pink ones. See these beautiful pink beads? Well, I'm going to show you what I do with these things. Here's, here's another one. Oh, it's got pretty beads. Pretty beads. It's got little... Let's take that out. I want you to see how pretty this is. These are things you pick up in, oh my gosh. I don't think I want to do anything to this one. I'd rather wear it just like it is. Isn't that pretty? This is the kind of stuff I did for a few years. I made jewelry. And I'm one of those I can just do something so long and then I'm through with it. I want a new project. I made quite a bit of jewelry. But then I went from making jewelry to doing Christmas trees. These are just, this is just a big old box. Big old box full. And this is what Jan handed me yesterday. She says, now go home and start working on Christmas trees. You've seen the beautiful beaded trees, and I'm going to show you one I did. I want to give you an idea of the kind of thing I do. I hope you can get a good look at this. I don't know how to do computers so that you can get things right. But take a look, close-up look. That's one of my 
jewel trees. And you see another one inside the gazebo. Now, I wasn't finished with that because inside that gazebo, I put tiny miniatures of snowmen and Christmas packages. I even had a little mailbox uh, like the ones that stand on the street. I had uh, little cats and dogs. It's not easy finding miniatures that small. We're talking about things that are uh, no more than two inches and even that is large, things that are like about an inch in size. Look, see the heart right in the middle? Okay, let's look at this one. It's hard to tell what these, but these have all come from broken jewelry, brooches, earrings, necklaces, um, tiny Christmas miniatures. You can see let me see, right here is a little Christmas candle. And usually near the top, I'll have a, a little cross or an angel. Now, I think I sold this one after I got it finished because this one was not completely decorated. I had little holly and bows and things all around it and the snowman around it, and uh, it had lights in it to light up. So this is one of the projects giving you a sample. I'm gonna show you some more things, and I hope you like what you see. This, this is what you call my life. Hold on, I'm gonna find you another one. This is a wreath inside a glass-covered shadow box. These are enamel pins from Jan's collection of jewelry. She wanted me to take all of those pins and do something with them. So I tried to shape them into a heart. You see in the center section, there's a butterfly. Anytime I can get a little bird or a butterfly in my uh, arrangements, I like to use them. And I use a lot of leaf pins. You know, women used to wear the brooches on their coats and they'd be like a big leaf. Well, you can see here where there were pairs of earrings. You'll look from one side to another, you'll see the same flower here and there. And these are enamel pins now. That's inside about a 15 by 15 uh, shadow box frame. And remember, mine have glass over them. They're not open to dust and, and dirt and everything, so they're protected. Now I'm gonna go to another one. This one is hanging on my wall. I didn't like it too well. And it does not have glass over it. Uh, the one that I can't, it's hard to find frames, shadow box frames with glass. That's my biggest problem. And I don't like to make them without the glass over them. So this is one on my wall. I just decided I'd keep it. Oh, this is a beauty. You gotta see this. You see that? That's a doll I made my first time to ever work with ceramics. And I was making it for my oldest granddaughter for a high school graduation. I chose the 1940s period for her outfit. She's wearing a little crepe dress, with got lace trim on it, black buttons, the little winter coat, is, as you can see, is red. And I wanted her to look like a little teenage girl. So she was in college, 
And she said, Granny Pat, when are you going to give me my doll that you were making for my high school graduation? Well, to be honest with you, she got that doll when she graduated from college. I was a little slow getting that job done. Now, let's see what else I can show you. Ah, uh, this is not the best picture I've got of it. But take a close look. Let me see if I can make that bigger. There we go. That's better. Take a close look. This is all, also from a collection of Jan's vintage jewelry. I made her a bouquet on black velvet. It's about, I don't remember, about 15 by 18 in the frame. And it really is, she thinks it's one of the prettiest she's ever seen and the prettiest that I've made. And she thinks if I should stick to doing bouquets instead of Christmas trees because you can display a bouquet on your wall year round. Now you see, I did use some leaves See how I use my lead? There's one over here. You see the little ones on the edges. There's a pair of earrings. Here's another pair in the pink. Um, sometimes I separate pieces of jewelry. Now I don't like to take good uh, jewelry. If it's got a, a, a bead or two missing, I can work around those things and see I used this. This would have been a perfect coat brooch, the gold one. And this is just stems of rhinestones that I glued in. So this gives you an idea of the project that I've worked with in the last few years. And I really just plain ran out of vintage jewelry. And that's what I need most. Um, anything that has got the pin missing off the back of a brooch, or it can have, uh, I can take a flower like the, um, this one right here. And if it's got a rhinestone or two missing here, I can cut that section out and just use the rest of the flower. I work them in together so that they form a bouquet. So this is the main one I wanted you to see. I am looking for junk jewelry, vintage jewelry that can be turned into a piece of artwork. There are a lot of people that do these things and I've seen some beautiful pieces but to be honest with you, I have not seen one I like better than this one. So I'm going to see if there's one or two more things. Okay, this was one of my first Christmas trees. You see how the brooches and the earrings and how I took one clip. I think that was a big coat or shoe clip at the bottom as the base of my Christmas tree. Um, it takes a lot of time and work positioning these things, getting them in the right place, and a lot of glue and a lot of pins and a lot of time, but I've got nothing more than I have of, but time. Here's another one that branches out. You know how they used to have the big, tall, skinny Christmas trees that didn't have very many uh, branches on it. Now that's a shadow box frame too. It's got, it's under glass. So you can see how I arranged it. Let you get a good look at it there. And notice the big bird right at the top. It is fun doing this sort of thing when, you, when you've got enough material to work with Here's one of my first ones I did. This is on red velvet, but it 
did not have glass over it. And when I moved from Tennessee, uh, I gave it to my neighbor. I told her to take it home with her. So you can see it's just all sorts of uh, pieces of old jewelry that you're, you don't want anymore. You lost one earring, stone came out of the brooch, what have you, or the pins off of the back. This is a necklace I gave a young lady when she graduated from college. You see the brooches and the beads that I've lined up, on the string beads, those are vintage brooches attached to that, and it was gorgeous. I think this was my favorite Christmas item. Um, I decided I wanted to do the stocking. Now, if you'll notice at the top, that spread like a band across the top, that's a bracelet, a rhinestone bracelet all the way across. And I tried to work the curved pieces so that it, I could get the curve in the gesture stocking. Don't know how close I can get so that you can see the pieces better, but it gives you a general idea of the time it takes to place those pieces together so that they form an art object. That is also in a shadow box frame with the glass over it and it sold. I sold it to uh, a little gift shop and when I saw the price she put on that, $450. Well, she can sell them because she's in business. But I enjoy making them regardless how much they bring. And I never was much for pricing things. I just enjoyed the, the artwork involved. So look real close. You like that. But it's a Christmas item. Well, let's see if I've got anything else. This is one of those brocade purses. Do you see the little butterfly right here? And then some of these things are buttons. Over here somewhere is a bumblebee right there. Those are just sequins and beads that I placed over each flower. Like here, whoops. Well, I'm messing up. Okay, where did I go? Anyway, some of these are just little pieces some are buttons. I'm trying to see what else I can see in this. I hate to be wiggling. Well, I'm gonna pass on that. Not working. I'm not getting what I wanted. Okay, that gives you an idea of what I do in my spare time. Oh, and by the way, you've got this recipe on one of my videos. Take a look at that. Does that look like you'd want to dip your spoon into it? That is a strawberry trifle right there. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't take long to eat all of that either. That's my trifle bowl. I bought it specifically for strawberry trifle. So you check the video, uh, it's one of the first videos I did, and uh, get that strawberry trifle recipe, you'll like it. Look at this. You see the lady, see her hat, look kind of copper color. And this is the lady and her hand. 
I added the big white leaf, the big silver leaf, the uh, iridescent spray, the little yellow leaves. Now, some of these things, see, have been taken from other things and pulled apart. And when I'd made this, I had in mind the Kentucky Derby. And my granddaughter said, oh, you ought to be able to sell that to somebody who's going to the uh, Derby in Louisville. Well, I waited too late, but it's, a be it's heavy, but it's a beautiful, large, oh, it's this, this big. But I love it, and it just make a beautiful brooch on uh, someone's outfit, or even on the side of a hat. Take a close look now. See her face and her hand. I was pleased with this when I finished with it. We'll go on a little bit more. And here is another one that I did not have a glass covered frame but this right here is all one brooch and you see the little leaves and the pair of earrings this is a pair of earrings right here and these are the things I work with here's another one I like this real well. It's not under glass either. But you see how I managed to make it look like a, a little bouquet in a vase from jewelry parts. I'm showing you these things for a reason. Now the frame has this gold, pretty gold frame. Those are lots of little leaves from brooches and earrings. And they've been separated and turned into a nice little, it, they're in a picture frame. Ah, uh, here we go. This is a better view. Here's the one I just showed you on the right. And the other one, see it looked like a bouquet. I like those real well. Ah, uh, here, this is cute. So you can do these in a five by seven frame. And I usually try to put some little something outside the main bouquet, just, just a little added touch. But these are all jewelry parts. See the open leaf, around the sides and at the bottom that was probably an earring the gold okay I know I don't want to bore you with all these things this this was a nice one too this is all black and silver and that's a big black brooch right in the center Just a little imagination's all it takes. Well, this is close up of the bouquet. All, all earrings. Sometimes the backs are off of the earrings, the reason people don't want to keep them anymore. Now, I don't know if you can tell much about this or not because it's on a head form. But this is what Jan wore or carried. It was a jewel bouquet that I made over, I put it on a half styrofoam ball and it had a handle to it. And this was her brooches. She wanted it red and rhinestone. Let's see if I've got a better view of that. You can't tell much about it. Here we go. 
I set it down over a, a vase. And you see all those strands of jewelry and your um, Borealis necklaces and all the brooches on top. It It's a beautiful piece. Well, I'm gonna show you this. My flower garden quilt. I love my flower garden quilt. You know, that's the one quilt that is made completely by hand. You don't sew any of it together on a sewing machine. So rather than just the regular flower garden pattern, I did mine with a flower basket in the center. I'm not that good at quilting. I can't make those tiny stitches. But when I finished with this one, I said, this is it. It took me about six months to make that quilt. See if I can get close up. That gives you an idea. In case you're a quilter, you might try that. I think that's all I'm going to show you today. But what I wanted to say was if you happen to have some of your mother's, your grandmother's vintage jewelry that uh, can't be used anymore, I, I don't want anybody giving me their good jewelry because I hesitate to take it apart or to put it in a frame like this. No, if you've got really good vintage jewelry, you keep it, keep it. But if you have that that you feel is not usable, let me know. Because the more I have to work with, the better my image is going to be. Because it takes a lot of jewelry to create one picture because you have to try so many different pieces to get the right one. So Jan has decided I need to make Christmas trees for Christmas. Now I have sold the framed, uh, and I, I've sold the gazebos with different Christmas trees inside with all kinds of miniature. I'm talking about this big little items all over the Christmas trees. So if you have anything like that and you're willing to part with it, let me know. You can send me pictures and uh, we'll see what we can do um, because the more jewelry I have, the better product I can provide for anyone that wants to buy one. So, uh, it's starting to brighten up a little now, I hope, because Jan has to come over. She gets so frustrated with me, and I don't blame her. I don't understand this, this computer lingo. I read it, and I read it, and I read it, and I still don't know what they're talking about, where to go, and how to do it. So, I'm uh, trying to get, trying to get my channel on for monetizing. Never heard the word monetizing till I got on YouTube, but everybody kept saying, you need to be monetized. Well, okay, so Jan set me up. Now she has to come over and get it finished so that I can make money. Woo! I never dreamed I could make money at all this crap stuff I've been doing all these years. But we'll see. And by dog, if I can make money from it, I'm going to start going places. And Jan's going with me because she has to be my Uber driver. That's why I call her my Uber driver. So, I'll let you go. 
and I'll keep you informed about my pain. All I can say is, have you ever had a poker shoved up your nose? A hot poker. That's what it feels like. And people who had this problem know exactly what I'm talking about when I say when that pain shoots up through my face, it goes up to my eye and it starts burning. I hope it does not have any effect on my vision. So that's another problem when you get old. So don't feel sorry for me. It'll, it'll take care of itself and hopefully my doctor will have a good answer for me. And if that doesn't work, I'll just go buy me a bottle of Maker's Mark. <laughs> I'm not a drinker, but I can learn to be if the pain is bad enough. Okay, that's enough on that. That's enough. Don't want to even talk about it anymore. So, you people take care. I think we're going to get a little sunshine today. Sunshine just makes all the difference in the world. It, it just, your, your attitude, uh, the way you feel, the way you look at life itself is brightened when you see the sun shining. So look up, look at the sun, get out and enjoy it. That's what Jan would tell me to do, get out and go for a walk. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go through my jewelry parts. I'm really, I'm getting kind of anxious to see what I've got to work with now. And I want to create some new ideas for my jewelry making. So you take care. Get out and have some fun today. Find you a good Goodwill or a thrift shop. Well, I gotta go. I've got a phone call.